Hello everyone, I am Amulya Lomde, a PhD student in Aerospace Engineering at Wichita State University and Dr. Bhishyam Sharma is my advisor. Today I will be talking about the effect of uh, uh, geometrical defects on the acoustical properties of periodic porous absorbers that are man additively manufactured using stereolithography. So first, as we all know, additive manufacturing is an ever advancing technology that could be scaled efficiently for any specific application. Uh, complicated geometries that were previously unrealizable can now be manufactured with ease using these technologies. Each process has uh, different working environment conditions and they use a variety of different materials. So macroscopically they look great and uh, with post-processing methods such as removal of support structures, heat treatment or surface finishing, they could ensure a proper fit for most of the applications. But as if we look at these structures microscopically, we see defects uh, such, as, um, such as the uh, internal support structures, surface roughness, double porosity uh, that impact the acoustical properties of uh, porous absorbers. So the bigger goal here is to understand what impact does each of these defects have on the acoustic nature of various porous absorbers. So there is some amount of work that's done using the fused deposition modeling method. Uh, so the current focus here uh, in, for our study is to uh, understand the defects incurred on a simple microstru microstructure geometry that is fabricated using a uh, stereolithography technique. So in order to do this, first we will study the behavior of the material, which here is a thermoset polymer that tends to expand when uh, it's subjected to thermal exposure during the printing and the curing process. Next, we will use a micro-macro uh, modeling method, numerical modeling method, to extract the transport properties and use a JCPL model to uh, compute the sun absorption behavior. This will further be compared to the data acquired by uh, testing the 3D printed samples using a two microphone normal incidence impedance tube uh, set up in our lab. So for the expansion study of the thermoset resin, we designed a simple uh, strut-based simple cubic unit cell with sharp corners as see, uh, shown here using topology software. So this unit cell is then distributed along the three directions so that we have at least four unit cells in each direction. The unit cell length was kept to a constant of 4 mm and the ligament thickness was varied between 1.2 and 2.4 with a step size of 0.3 mm, so a total of five configurations. And on the right, you can see a 3D printed uh, uh, cubic sample uh, that is used for optical analysis. Uh, so two of these, uh, two, two samples of each configuration were fabricated uh, in order to have a wide range of uh, data. And uh, to print these samples, Form 3 uh, printer was used. So all the samples were analyzed optically using a microscope in our lab for the changes in the ligament thickness and the pore size and shape. All the solid ligaments and the pore sizes were captured and measured on the top, um, the top and the side surfaces. So first let's look at, first let's understand what kind of features or defects that the stereolithography printing technique uh, uh, results in. For simplicity, only uh, one image for each ligament thickness is shown here or for uh, each for top view and the side view. So for the ligament thickness of 1.2 mm, the shape is very well maintained with uh, minor curvatures that are seen around the corners. Uh, whereas as the ligament thickness increases, the top view shows that the degree of curvature is increasing, uh, which is a result of the increase in uh, the interpolymer interactions uh, that is due to the thermal exposure. So another observation is that the pores along the depth are they maintain the uh, pore size and the shape much closer to the design when compared to that on the XY plane. This lower amount of expansion along the depth uh, or the build direction, if you can say, is uh, attributed to a minimum layer of uh, minimum layer thickness of 0.025 mm, which results in lower amount of uh, polymer along the build direction. So a uh, similar behavior is again seen where a larger expansion along the XY plane and smaller expansion along the built direction is observed. Uh, overall, 
larger thick larger ligament thickness it exhibits greater uh, degree of expansion with increased curvatures as we see in e f and g here in some of the cases the pores also tend to narrow down to a circle as uh, indicated uh, here so uh, along with these observations we also observe that uh, especially for ligament thicknesses of 2.1 and 2.4 uh, some of the pores were clogging or some of the resin it, it was sticking to the uh, the top surface which creates extra layers that were not part of the design so in as a result it's increasing the uh, ligament thickness and this was especially in the uh, along the belt direction so uh, based on the ligament thickness dimensions that were captured from all the samples uh, that were 3d printed um, we extract the uh, trends in each direction on uh, the top xy plane and the side xz plane uh, in agreement to the before optical analysis we see that the as printed value is greater than the design value here we approximate this trend using a quadratic fit that is shown using the red dashed line the blue dots show the average dimensional measurements in each direction and the range indicates the associated standard deviation so overall the expansion rates along the x and y directions are larger and very similar to each other and along the build direction smaller expansion rates were observed to verify the expansion trends we uh, we uh, saw in the previous slide uh, four cylindrical samples with ligament thicknesses of 1.2 1.6 2 and 2.4 mm were three designed and 3d printed uh, two of the values 1.2 mm and 2.4 mm are part of the training data and the two other values of uh, 1.6 and 2 mm are not part of the data so using the trends we saw uh, here we are interpolating the ligament thickness values for a 3d printed sample uh, based on the design input along the x and y directions so as we see here the measured values of the ligament thickness they fall within the predicted range very closely um, further, these 3D printed samples were tested using uh, uh, two microphone normal incidence impedance tube setup for uh, the sound absorption behavior. All the 3D printed samples here, there were uh, the cylindrical samples, they had a thickness of uh, 30 mm. So this uh, sound absorption behavior is then compared with the finite element computations. For the numeric an analysis, uh, we are using a micro-macro modeling method, which is a physics-based model or a method uh, that solves for the visco-inertial and um, thermal energy losses that are occurring due to the fluid and the solid interactions in the porous medium. This method requires identifying a representative elementary volume that closely resembles the microstructure geometry of the porous absorber. And then we solve three partial differential equations, that is, uh, the creeping flow, which is the Stokes flow problem, uh, Laplace's problem, and the Poisson's problem over the fluid domain to extract six transport properties. So for the first problem, it's the Stokes flow problem, uh, which is used to solve for the viscous losses at the low frequencies. Uh, here we solve for the velocity field V with no slip uh, boundary condition on the fluid and the solid interface and use this field to calculate the transfer properties of uh, static viscous tortuosity and the static viscous permeability. The second PDE is the Laplace's problem where we are solving for the potential field Q uh, to capture the inertial losses at the high frequency uh, regime. Since this problem, co it coincides with the problem of electrically insulating solid which is filled with a conductive fluid. We solve for the uh, potential field Q and then calculate the electric field E, uh, capital E here, which is uh, further used to uh, extract or calculate the transfer, transfer properties of torchosity and the viscous characteristic length shown here. The third problem is the Poisson's uh, problem, which is again solved for uh, in the static regime, regime, where we are solving for the thermal fluctuations inside the fluid domain with thermal insulation boundary conditions. So using the uh, thermal permeability uh, value here, uh, we can extract the uh, transfer properties of the static thermal permeability and the static thermal uh, tortuosity. 
So all the extracted transfer properties are uh, input in, into the semi-phenomenological semi model. Uh, so here we are using the johnson chapeau allard pride lafarge model, which is the JCPL in short, uh, to compute the characteristic bulk properties and then the sun absorption behavior. This model requires eight transfer properties. So using the micro-macro modeling method, we extract the six parameters uh, by solving the three PDVs uh, or the partial differential equations. And the other two, which are the uh, porosity and the thermal characteristic length, they are calculated calculated purely based on the geometry. So uh, here we are showing the results that are extracted using the micro-macro method and the JCPL model. The unit cells uh, are here in on this for the results on this slide are uh, designed in COMSOL with sharp edges uh, as shown on the top right. In the plots, the, uh, the black lines, they indicate the two microphonic experimental results. Uh, red dashed lines uh, indicate the results for the as designed unit cell. And the magenta, green, and um, the blue lines, they show the behavior for the unit cells that were modified uh, based on the ligament thickness trends we had seen earlier. So the first observation is that the designed unit cell, it always underpredicts the sun absorption behavior because obviously the design unit cell, it does not reflect the, the 3D printed unit cell. So whereas using the expansion trends uh, for the ligament, we see that the uh, ligament thickness is increased uh, as, as the ligament thickness is increased to the uh, uh, the maximum limit, which is shown by uh, the maximum here, uh, the sun absorption behavior gets closer to the experiment, uh, where we see that the peaks, the first, the initial peaks, they are matching very closely. Um, however, uh, there is this constant difference between the numerical and the experimental results, in especially in the mid frequency range. We are seeing this difference as not all the viscoinertial and the thermal losses are captured using the unit cell that is designed here. So the next thought was maybe adding curvatures could help cover this gap. So here uh, the unit cells were designed uh, based on the average ligament dimensions that were interpolated using the expansion trends. Um, so and different cur curvature values were used for each of these uh, uh, unit cell configurations. For example, we have uh, three different values for uh, 1.2 mm ligament thickness and 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 mm for uh, 2.4 ligament thickness here. Um, so still, we see that there is uh, an underprediction of uh, the numerical uh, values. But there are two interest interesting uh, observations. First, it's that we see a better matching of the peak locations and the trends they follow uh, very closely uh, with almost like a, there's, there's a constant difference between the experimental and the numerical uh, results, at least for the first three configurations here. So and the second observation is that as the, the degree of uh, curvature, it does not seem to have an impact on the sun absorption we see that all the uh, dashed lines, except for the red dashed, they overlap on each other, uh, which tells us that the, the, the curvatures that are at least under consideration here, they do not have, uh, they do not seem to uh, make an impact on the absorption behavior. So in summary, we studied the solid ligament behavior of uh, the thermoset resin for the samples that were 3D printed using stereolithography technique. We saw that the as uh, ligament thickness increased, the expansion rate increases uh, quadratically in the XY plane and comparatively lower along the uh, build direction. Next, we observed that the numerical models are under predicting the sun absorption results. Since the unit cell does not fully incorporate multiple defects such as clogging of the pores, uh, non-uniformity non of the pore size and shape in any particular uh, configuration or direction. Uh, however, we see promising results when it comes to matching the peak locations, the trends, and uh, uh, the absorption behavior in the low and uh, the high uh, frequency range, especially when we were uh, using the maximum uh, deviation values. 
Um, so next we are currently working towards uh, studying uh, the aspects such as the repeatability of the printing process and uh, uh, modeling of the acoustic properties. So also uh, uh, one of the other steps would be incorporating efficiently uh, these defects as many as possible into the hybrid model uh, to be able to predict the acoustic properties in a better way. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Martha Brown and Mike Jones from NASA Langley Research Center for the support we had received and many helpful dis discussions and also Anthropology for giving us uh, a free education license to be so that we could uh, model and uh, model our unit cells for our research purposes. Here are uh, the references. And uh, thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at the email addresses uh, that are provided here. Uh, thank you once again.